Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode as we take on struggling Charlton and struggling Fulham in the Championship today because we are only starting to struggle just a little bit. Uh, predictably, as you would have expected, after we start to play some better teams in this division, we have started to lose games and drop down the table. The miraculous start that we had is crumbling away, but I still think we're in a very good position. So let's talk about that first things first, but make sure you do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Let's have a look at the results from in between episodes then. And of course, you were last here for the win against Cardiff, and then the 2-0 loss to Reading. Well, since then, the rest of September was all red. Now, Villa, relegated from the Premier League, expected to lose that game away from home, and as you can see, a 3-1 loss. We did lose it. Agonisingly, we lost to Barnsley in the EFL Cup third round on penalties. Paul Mullen missed the penalty in the shootout to secure Barnsley into the next round. But that's the first we've ever got in the EFL Cup, which I think is a pretty reasonable achievement, maybe. We'll see. Peterborough, we lost 3-2 to those guys at home. George Alexander with the brace, but Peterborough are actually very good in this save file. They nearly got promoted last season, were in the playoffs of the championship, so they know what they're doing. The only win we had in between episodes was a 2-1 win over Preston Escobar and Alexander on the score sheet there. Escobar once again on the score sheet in a 2-1 loss to Swansea. That Battle of Wales was a loss, unfortunately. But Paul Mullen did secure a draw for us in the 92nd minute at home against Watford. So, some things to cheer about, but most results were not great in between episodes. And what it means is we do slide down the table, as you can see. 11th place with 17 points on the board is still fantastic. If you told me that right at the start of the season, I would have snapped your hands off at that. It's just disappointing the way we started the season and the way it's now going. But still top half, but very quickly we could be drawn down in towards the deep bottom half of the table. 17 points could be evaporated today if we lose to both Charlton in 23rd and Fulham in 19th. But other than that, not a huge amount to report on for today's episode. This is the team that's going to take on Charlton. Unfortunately, we've got some orange dotted lines. When I hover over them, it doesn't tell me anything, but I'm pretty sure it means those players aren't playing well together, which is a little bit concerning. So we might have to make some personnel tweaks at some point, but we'll we'll wait and see what happens with it. So John's starting in goal with a backline of Kazawa, Holm, Thomas Parry and Paul. I believe Oliver Street had a knock in between episodes, is now back from that injury, which is good. Byro playing in the left midfielder role with Jones and Webster and Bryce Hosanna today in the right midfield. And McParland coming back from an injury himself, so he's not quite fit enough to start this game. With Escobar and Alexander leading the line, both of whom are on five goals so far this season, which is much better scoring form than they were in last season. So, kickoff is upon us here today. We're at home. Hopefully, it's going to be a nice result for us. Charlton, obviously, in the relegation zone. I'd like to think we're going to have enough about us this season to beat these teams in the relegation zone. We did so right at the start of the season, but of course, we are out of form. We're dropping morale. And really, the players, are they good enough? We don't quite know, if I'm honest with you. So it's going to be a difficult situation to see us uh, winning some of these games, I think. But these are the games, if we want to avoid relegation and do better than we did last season, are the games that we need to be winning quite desperately, as Chris Johns makes a very good save. An interesting keeper, Chris Johns. He's kept a few clean sheets this season so far. He makes some good saves. But I think, really... We might need a better keeper of some sorts, potentially. I mean, everyone needs to improve, I must say. We need to improve in every position. Uh, Byro on the left wing might be the best player on paper in the team, but he's actually playing pretty poorly at the moment. I think he's 6-5 in his last five games on average. And if he could just get an assist, that would have been brilliant. How has Alexander not scored that goal? I really do not know. Blimey. That's... That's, that's made me quite sad, I'll be honest. That's made me pretty sad. How has that not gone in the back of the net? Wow, what a situation we have missed there. Luckily for us, though, Escobar can get a goal. He it's an own goal in the end. Oh, it's a shame it's not gone down for Escobar. Um, either way, we will take a goal early on in this game. After that miss from Alexander, at least it's an immediate goal scored. So we've not wasted the highlights, technically, maybe. But Hosanna puts the ball across. And yeah, Escobar doesn't touch it, I guess. I think it's... Attempted challenge from Cousin Dawson, but he puts it in the back of his own net, so we'll take it. 
Can we sign a petition to get Escobar given that goal, please, actually? I want him to get as many goals as possible this season. I feel like I've taken him under my wing. I just found, well, my scouts found him as a free agent or whatever it was. And we had to bring him in. And I love him. And he's like my new favourite player, basically. As we go 2-0 up. Thomas Parry this time scoring from a corner. And this is more like it. Good start to this game for us. Charlton are nowhere to be seen, apart from on the pitch conceding goals. We've also got a free kick right now as well. They've got a yellow card for it, but Escobar lining this one up. Come on, lad. In the back of the net. Oh, it was nearly there. It was nearly there. A great save from Charlton's keeper. Keeped out the back of the net. But if we can keep doing things like that, a few of them are going to go in the back of the net. Thomas Parry this time not scoring at the near post from this corner. But another corner from James Jones on the other side is swung in towards Thomas Parry, who gets his second of the game and fourth of the season. The young centre-back loving that one. And is actually technically now our third high scorer this season, which is very good going. Well done, Thomas Parry. But it's always a little concerning when your centre-backs are right up there as top scorers. But two goals for him today is fantastic. 3-0 up before half-time. I'm very happy with this one. And I've learnt from mistakes in the past. I won't jinx it. I'm not going to say anything. I will not jinx this result by claiming anything of any sort. So let's forget I even said that because even, even saying that might have jinxed things. It hasn't, don't worry. Let's not panic. But at half-time, a very good scoreline for us, although there was one more highlight before half-time. If we can grab a fourth goal before half-time, oh, so close. Alexander been very unlucky today. Uh, really should have had two goals in this first half, that chance included. Doesn't matter, though, because we're winning 3-0. Weirdly, Escobar on a 6.5, uh, despite him basically scoring a goal. I'm not happy with that. Um, he is the wonder kid that I have. He's not a wonder kid. I don't think he's actually going to be that good in the future. Premier League potential, great, but I don't think he's probably quite the player that's going to be like an Mbappe, for example. But I still quite like him, and I don't like him sitting on a low rating right now, as we can't quite score a goal from this highlight, although it's still going on. It's in! The keeper, like, drags it over the line. And it does count as an own goal, but so annoying. Like, that should be Byro's goal. That should be Byro's goal. Escobar should have got the goal earlier on. Charlton are sabotaging us. I think the ball's over the line before he even catches it, if I'm honest with you, from that replay there. I mean, we'll take the goal. Has it counted? It's only 4-0. Wait, we... I've confused myself talking about all the goals that could have gone in the back of the net. I'm not, I, I don't really know what the scoreline should be, other than we should be winning it. 4-1. But that's good because no clean sheet bonuses to get paid out to our players because they're getting quite high now with some of these players and ideally we don't want to pay them. So it's nice they score a constellation goal. Uh, 15 or so minutes to go. We need to make a change and I need to work out the scoreline properly. So it pains me to do it, but Escobar is going to get dragged off for Mullen and we're going to swap those two over. I also want to give Oliver Street a little bit of a run out there instead of Apo Holm, and then maybe that's it. Everyone else is playing pretty well, I must say. Uh, fitness not too much of an issue right now. We've got a good few days off before the next game against uh, Fulham, which hopefully we're also going to win as we temporarily go 8th in the table, as you can see there, up to 20 points, 3 points off the playoffs after 12 games. It's no mean feat, to be fair. I'm pretty happy with the way we're playing right now. I still don't think we're going to get up there and be in the playoffs this season, but that sort of... Well, I said lower mid-table is what I wanted as a minimum, and... I think we're going to at least get that this season based on what we've seen so far. Escobar has got a fitness issue, does he? Right, okay. Well, maybe we drop him for the next game. So maybe the fitness is what's causing him to have a bad rating potentially. But still, uh, training rest uh, two days for the players because actually a few of them do look quite tired. Rob Lainton, former goalkeeper of ours and is now a goalkeeping coach. Uh, sadly, he's terrible at coaching, so otherwise we would have maybe signed him. But he's praising uh, Thomas Parry, who actually is very, very good. Last five games, or average rating across the season is really high. We should probably praise him, actually, for that. Uh, he draws comparisons between Thomas Parry and Ben Tozer, who's now an assistant manager. Look at you. I mean, no job, but still, an assistant manager. You love to see it. Uh, what we should do, actually, is probably report, no, uh, discuss, praise player, recent form. You've been great. Keep it up. Only 19 years old as well. Like, he's got a lot of room to grow with 
I mean, it says close to full potential there, but he's championship standard right now. He has to be a Premier League player in the future, surely. Only 19 years old. I refuse to believe he's hit his limit already. I refuse to believe it. Also doing very well is 17-year-old Tyson Allen. He's having a good loan spell at Wickham, who are having a bit of a poor season so far. They are predicted to be like 7th, as you can see there. Currently 21st, which is uh, not ideal for them, or maybe our players. But it seems like Tyson Allen is a bright spark in that Wickham team and I'm tempted to bring him back in January you know to maybe retrain him to play a little bit further back but we could just you know potentially just move a player there and he just plays like that maybe but I think the quicker we can start to get him into our first team uh, the better for the whole team but of course he's got to be ready to do that but the game against Fulham has come around very quickly uh, 17th in the championship they are so they must have they were 19th before so they must have won their game in between when we play our last game. I was going to say in between episodes, but that's not true, is it? It's the game we played a second ago. All of a sudden as well, those dotted lines are now solid lines. Does one good result change that? I can't hover over it and see. And I feel like I may be lying to you. I don't quite... I'm pretty sure dotted lines mean a bad connection and solid lines mean a good connection. And just like orange is like, it's getting good. And green is like, it's really good. So we're getting towards those good connections, but I failed to see how one good game repairs all those connections. I don't know. Changes to the team. I think Escobar will come off for this one for Paul Mullen and swap those two over uh, so we can get them playing in slightly better roles suited to each other. Who else do we want to change around? I think we bring McParlin back on for Bryce Hosanna, who did actually have a good game last time out. So maybe that's a, a bit of a risk. Potentially we should be leaving Bryce Hosanna on the pitch, but I do like McParlin. Uh, Paul can stay there. Yeah, the rest of the team can stay as it is. Submit, let's go, let's win. So kickoff is upon us once again here today. Fingers crossed we're going to get another big result and hopefully not as many own goals. Although if that's the only way we're going to win, I'll take the own goals. As uh, Parry launches one up towards Paul Mullen, who uh, can't win it in the air. And the ball is then sent the other end to Eddie Unketia, who puts his chip way over the bar. I always feel Eddie Unketia is overrated. I don't think he's that good. I know Arsenal quite like him in real life. And I'm not a coach, so maybe I'm being very harsh on him. I don't know. But personally, I just don't think he's that good of a player. But now I've said that, I've jinxed it, haven't I? I've really jinxed it. Hat-trick incoming. I, I've realised the moment this highlight started that I've jinxed it and Eddie Nketiah is going to play an absolute blinder today. The best game of his entire career. Although the man trying to stop him doing that, uh, Adam Thomas Parry, is on a 7 rating right now. The best player on the pitch, apparently, according to average rating. So he's doing his job right now, but there's still a long way for this game to go. And a long way for him to not do his job. As at least Enketia didn't shoot then. At least it wasn't Enketia, which is good. But this game is finally in the balance. 40 minutes on the clock. I think it's about five shots apiece from the match stats, if I remember correctly, from before his highlight started. Enketia not offside there, apparently. I'm not sure. I think he probably was offside. As Johnson puts it into Eddie Enketia, nearly scoring at the near post. Chris Johns with a good save. Yeah, five shots to a six shots to Fulham now. And before half time comes around, is there going to be a chance for us to score one just before the half time whistle? The answer might be yes. That ball forward by Fulham is terrible and Kazawa can bring it forward down the left-hand side. Into the path of Biro, into Alexander who just gives it straight to Johnson, the right back for Fulham. Cleared out from the back, only as far as Holm who gets it into Thomas Parry. The attack starts once again. Alexander through. Go on, lad. Finish it off. Hmm... In the meantime, another highlight before half-time. We've got uh, Fulham coming forward with the ball. Down to Enketia. I mean, that was nearly a very good save from Chris Johns. Um, at least Enketia didn't score. That's the main thing for me out of all of this. Enketia didn't score. Uh, Anoma did score the goal, which kind of was created by Enketia. It was a great block, by the way, from last ditch challenge here. Enketia is through, should score. Look at that last ditch challenge there. Is that pole with the last ditch challenge? It was pole. Unfortunately, the deflection goes straight to Anoma's path and uh, Fulham lead at the break. Don't worry, though. Don't worry, there is still plenty of time to go in this game. Plenty of time for us to get back in it. And I fully believe our team will do it as McParland brings the ball forward. There's bodies arriving in the middle. And those bodies are getting not on the end of it. How has Alexander messed that one up? 
I do like our strikers. I do like them. It's the one area that we weren't able to strengthen over summer. And I kind of wish we had for chances like that, as we've just been unlucky. We've been so unlucky in this game against Fulham. A chance off the post there from Thomas Parry as he uh, nearly gets his third goal of the episode. Wouldn't have been great if he had done it. Still chance, though, as Webster finds Byro, heads it down to James Jones. James Jones puts it back in towards I mean, no one in the end. And here comes the counter-attack from Fulham and Ketia trying to bring it forward. Please end the highlights. The highlight's not ending. Please end it. Otherwise, this could be a Fulham goal right now. And if it is, I'll be very cross with James Jones. Luckily, Johns collects the ball. And that is not the end of the highlight. It is the end of a highlight. Okay, that's kind of all right, I suppose. 30 minutes to go in this game. It's still very finely in the balance. Both these teams playing quite well, I must say. But we need to play better. Byron on a 6-5. Swap with McParlin. Let's bring uh, Bryce Hosanna on the right-hand side of the pitch. Please. What else? Mullen on 6-3. Escobar on your come. You two swap over. Oh, no one in the attack is playing particularly well. We need, I think in January, we need to try and bring in strikers and wingers. I think strikers and wingers to just have some more options would be quite handy for us as Alexander puts that one over the bar. Come on, we've got 20 minutes to go. We're already on attacking. I'm going to shout encourage to the team out there. Pole with the throw in into Hosanna, into Alexander, into Webster, who finds Escobar, who can find the ball to the Fulham midfielders. You hate to see it. Okay, Escobar coming on, not really making much of an impact so far. Come on, lads. I believe in us. I know we can turn this game around. We just need to win possession and then do something very clever and nice with it, which we can do. We did it loads in the previous game against Charlton. Fulham, though, proved themselves to be a little bit more difficult. They have got a better team on us on paper, though. They have got a much better team than us, so I can I can understand that they are going to just be that little bit better in every sort of area of the pitch. Like strikers. I tried to say that to give him confidence, or not jinx it. You know, if I was going to say, oh, here's a goal for Escobar, it would never have gone in. I tried to give him confidence by anti-jinxing him, saying, oh, they've got better strikers than us. He was meant to prove, prove me wrong. He makes it very hard to love him sometimes. Very hard to love him. I want to love him. But he makes it difficult as Webster brings the ball forward, uh, doing quite well, gets the ball to Hosanna from the challenge. Hosanna back to Webster. Webster not reading the play properly there and uh, mix it between our two players. We lose possession. And really, I think we deserve something out of this. We've hit the post. We've had one just go wide from Escobar. We had another chance from Alexander earlier on in the game as well. We had the chances in this game to finish it off. It's just the quality of our players are still lacking just that little bit, maybe. Just that little bit as Fulham come forward. I can guarantee you now a second goal for them, isn't it? And that's going to kill the game off. And they don't deserve it. They don't deserve a second goal here today. But it's going to be scored by Enketia, isn't it? No, it's not. It's going to be an assist for Enketia, who's technically got two assists today. Technically. It's a weird one, right? It's a weird one. We, we, we thrash teams like Charlton, and it's fantastic. But then we just shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit against Fulham, for example, in this game. We're getting better. We're better than last season, and we're getting there, but it still shows... There's a lot of work to do before we've got a good chance of actually getting promoted or something like that. As we could concede a third here if we're not careful. Thomas Parry, good clearance, but only as far as Fulham players as the highlight continues. We Come on. Better than this, please, boys. I believe in you, and I believe in Apo Holmes clearances, but again, only as far as Fulham players. We just can't quite get the ball cleared into safety enough. And it's going to be another assist for Nketiah, isn't it? He's got a hat-trick of assists, basically. It's my fault. I do apologise. I I glitched it. Glitched it, jinxed it. What are you going to call it? I did it all. And you know what's worse? It's because I said he's going to score a hat-trick of goals. And he said to me, I'm so good, I don't need to score the goals. I'll get a hat-trick of assists instead. We did not deserve to lose that 3-0. I mean, look at the XG. Not that XG is a proper indicator, right, really. It's a... It's a I don't know. I feel very hard done by. So I'm actually going to be calm on the boys. Uh, 
you know, disappointed we didn't win. We had a lot of chances that game. Don't get demotivated by it, boys. Keep playing like that offensively, but, you know, actually score some goals. We'll be fine. Anyway, we've got a, a few tough games coming up in the uh, next few weeks or so as well. Uh, like Bournemouth in 6th, Barnsley in 7th, Middlesbrough 11th, but mm, that's probably still better than us, aren't they? QPR 16th, Ipswich, th like the next month, November. If we're lucky, we might pick up points against Middlesbrough and QPR. <laughs> if we're lucky. This could be a sea of red through November, so I think we might skip over those for next episode. But we will be back for... I don't think we've done West Brom on camera, but I could be lying to you, but I don't think we've done Forest either. So let's do West Brom and Forest next episode. So thank you very much for watching today. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. A uh, bit of a weird one with the big win and the big loss, but I think you can see we're playing quite well. So until next time, have a lovely day and I will see you uh, tomorrow. Last episode of the year tomorrow on New Year's Eve and uh, and then we kickstart 2022, which is very exciting. So uh, if I don't speak to you before New Year, have a lovely New Year and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.